Multiple sclerosis can be a scary disease and diagnosis and talking to people in your life about it can also be hard. That may be at work or even within the family and with friends. Ingrid will talk about her issues with her MS and how she has learned to communicate and work with the MS care team to make that easier. My name is Ingrid and I was diagnosed with relapsing remitting MS in February of 2012. Um, when I was first asked to do these videos, I was hesitant because I don't even like having my photo taken, but I figured if I can help at least one person with MS by giving my story or answering any questions, then it would be worth my time. So the mantra for the MS Teamworks um, is I have MS, I have a team and I have a future. And when I first heard this mantra, I think I rolled my eyes so hard that my contact got stuck. But after thinking about it, um, the more I actually really thought about it, the more I think it's, it's, it's perfect. Um, I have a mess that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I have a team. As a special education teacher, um, I am part of a bigger team, um, an IEP team which stands for Individualized Education Plan for Students with Learning Disabilities. And I feel like since being diagnosed with MS and having my own team on which I rely, um, I'm better to, uh, able to understand my students. Um, my students rely on myself, other special education teachers, um, the, the IEP facilitator, their parents, um, there's a huge team that goes into making sure that each student receives the education that they need. And then the most important part is that we adjust it as needed. If a student isn't receiving something they need, then we, we change the accommodations, we change the goals. And I feel like that is very similar to how my MS team works. If I am not responding to a certain medication, then my neurologist, um, the MRI technicians, um, the nurses, we get together and see if I need a different plan of action or a different treatment. So I feel like since being diagnosed with MS, I'm more able to um, kind of understand, understand my students better. Once you are diagnosed with MS, you're gonna have a whole team of individuals. You're gonna have a neurologist, um, who will be your main point of contact. And I can't stress enough how important it is to have a neurologist with whom you are comfortable, um, you can talk to, who will answer all of your questions, and who makes you feel less scared and more comfortable with, with MS. Um, but another part of your team will be the um, nurses and phlebotomists because you're going to have a lot of blood work done. And unfortunately, it's also going to include MRI technicians. And as someone who is claustrophobic, I can tell you that that is not a pleasant experience. Um, I actually go in three or four days for my third MRI since July. Um, so you are going to get used to, to having MRIs, whether or not you like them. And you also can't get the open MRIs because they don't um, have enough um, Imaging, they, the imaging isn't strong enough, so you can't opt for that. You have to have the traditional closed in the, in the casket MRI. Um, but another part of your team will be your family and friends or whoever you want to know about your, your MS. And it is important that if you are struggling or feeling fatigue, and fatigue is one of the number one um, symptoms of MS, that if you are offered help, that you accept the help. Um, even just someone coming over and watching your baby for a little while so you can take a nap can re-energize you and being tired um, obviously makes it more difficult to function mentally and physically and even just having MS can make you um, a little more depressed and fatigued feeling so it's important that you get as much rest and help as possible. I have a future. MS is scary. Um, I pretend like it doesn't bother me, but in the back of my mind it does. Um, MS is scary as hell. 
and do yourself a favor, don't Google all of the possible symptoms for MS. Um, it's kind of like thinking about a car crash. A car crash would be horrible, but worrying about it doesn't do anything. You can only um, deal with the symptoms that you have and don't worry about what could possibly happen. MS can be very scary. Um, and the way that I personally deal with that in my everyday life um, is through humor. Recently at work, the teachers were asked to describe themselves with a six-word biography. And mine was, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. Um, and that f philosophy goes through my, in every portion of my life, um, especially with the MS. Some people cry to deal with situations, um, but I'm not a crier, I never have been, so I deal with humor and sarcasm. And although some people might think it's taboo or inappropriate to make fun of any aspect of a disease, um, I do joke around about my MS with family members and people like at work who know about my disability. For example, um, one of my primary symptoms is numbness and weakness in my hand. So sometimes I will drop things frequently. But even if I'm not having a flare up and I drop something, I'll be like, oh, it was the MS. And when I can make fun of it every day, it makes the times that it really is a result of the MS a little less serious. It makes it a little less scary for me. So although I usually deal with MS um, with humor and that takes the scary away, there are times where it is scary. I do have this disease. There is a possibility of the progression. Um, and usually those times, it doesn't build up. It's just something that like hits me out of nowhere. For example, my fiance and I were watching a TV show called Scorpion recently. And one of the main characters has a sister. And you see her throughout the season. And she's sick. And she has some sort of progressive disease. And, um, but they never tell you what it is, or at least I never saw an episode where they tell you what it is. And she has a living will, and they don't want to intubate her, and it's a, a, a big deal between the characters. And then finally, she, um, she passes away, and you learn that she has MS. So as soon as that scene hit, I turned, over, turned my head toward my fiance, who was white as a ghost, and was like, did you really just make me watch that? And it was kind of like, it just hit me, bam, that could be my reality, even though it's not something that I want to think about in everyday life. The point is that after watching that show, I did feel a range of emotions. I was angry that I was forced to watch that show. I was scared that that could happen to me. I was sad for the character and for myself. Um, I may have even shed a few tears. I don't remember, but probably did. Um, but the point is that in everyday life, I don't think about my MS unless I'm in the middle of a flare-up um, or unless I'm preparing to give myself an injection. Like for those couple minutes, I think about the MS, but I don't let the MS consume my life. I don't think about it unless it is directly affecting me at that minute. Um, I don't go out of my way to hide my MS, but I also don't go out of my way to tell people unless they need to know or unless it comes up organically in conversation. Um, recently, I told a couple people at work and I realized that I have a hard time telling people because I can't deal with their reactions, which seem, seems a little ludicrous to me. But one of the reactions was, oh, I had no idea. And I was like, well, Thank goodness, I was worried my lesions were showing. Like, why would you be able to tell that I have MS? It seemed silly to me. Um, and then another reaction was like, are you serious? No, I thought that would be a funny joke. The way that people react causes me to have an awkward reaction, and it's worse than the fact that they know that I have the MS. Another thing about um, letting people know that you have MS is I feel like people don't understand it and that they might judge me because when people think of MS, they think of the more progressive kind, maybe the kind where people are in wheelchairs, can't walk, stutter. Um, so the fact that I am saying I have MS and they can't see my um, 
my disease, my symptoms, makes me feel like maybe they're judging me that I'm trying to play, play the disability card or something. And then sometimes I feel bad about saying that I have MS because so many people with MS do have um, much worse symptoms than I do. And I feel bad for lumping myself in the same category as them. Um, but then I think that could be me. I could have those symptoms. Um, and then that's scary. So once again, um, it's something that I don't like to think about. I don't really talk about it unless people have questions. Since being diagnosed with my MS in February of 2012, I have been on three disease-modifying treatments so far. The first treatment was Copaxin, and that was a daily injection. Um, they were tiny syringes that you injected into your abdomen, your thighs, your hips, and the back of your arms. Um, that one had the least side effects. It did cause like little egg welts um, wherever the injection was. But the good thing about the Capaxin was that if you're on Capaxin and you decide to try and have a family, you can stay on the Capaxin until you get pregnant. You don't have to wash out of the, medica the medication beforehand, before trying. Um, then I had a relapse and I had to go on another medication called Rebif. So that was an injection too, but that was kind of like a, like a pen, like an auto injector. And that was three times a week. Um, the symptoms, the, I'm sorry, the side effects were a little bit, a little bit more intense. It gave you flu-like symptoms. The site reactions were a little bit worse. They left like egg size, um, bruises wherever I injected. Um, and the bad thing about that medication was that when I did decide to try to have a baby, I had to be off of that medication for three months before even trying. So before you do that, you have to be stable for about a year, and then you have to be off the medication for three months, and then you have to try for the baby. So it could end up being a year and a half or two years um, of of not being on any medication. And then after my baby, I was put on a new medication. Actually, I just started that one recently. And that one is Plegrity, which is the same category of medication as the Rebif, but it's only twice a month injections. What I have found so far is that the side effects are much more intense. Um, I got horrible body aches. And the injection site reactions, even though the injections are much less frequent, the site reactions are much larger. So if you're one who likes to wear shorts, I would say Plegrity is probably not one of the best medications because you will have huge welts on your thighs each time that you give yourself the injection. Um, I actually still have uh, big bruises on both of my thighs, and my first injection was more than a month ago. Now that I've finished complaining about these medications, would I recommend staying on a disease-modifying treatment? Absolutely. The, the aesthetic bruises and everything um, are nothing compared to the, the symptoms of MS that could possibly progress without the disease-modifying treatments. So like I had said before, um, MS can make you exhausted and very fatigued. Um, as a special education teacher in middle school and a mother of an almost 10-month-old, um, I'm often very exhausted, and when I get home from work, um, I, I like to relax when I can. But most days, I push myself to exercise, and when I was younger, I used to exercise for weight loss, but now I exercise for strength, so I do a lot of weight training, um, and I still do cardio, but mostly do weight training. So when I do have a flare-up or a relapse and I experience some sort of weakness, I, it doesn't affect me as much. Um, I can still lift things. I can still use my hands. Um, I actually recently was evaluated because I'm in the middle of a flare-up, and the, the physician's assistant couldn't even notice that I had weakness in the one hand because I continue to exercise with weights. Um, so. I definitely push myself to do what I can physically now while I'm able to in case I'm unable to do that in the future. So this has been my story. I have MS. 
I have a team, I have a future.